අද මම ජනාධිපතිතුමාගේ කතාව අහගෙන හිටියා අර බොහොම කෙටියෙන් කියන්න තියෙන්නේ එතුමා සඳහන් කළා මානව හිමිකම් පිටුපස සැඟවී ප්‍රචණ්ඩත්වය ආයි ආරාජිකත්වයයි අති කළ නොහැක කියලා අපි ඒක ගැඟ අපි එකඟ වෙනවා ප්‍රචණ්ඩත්වය ඇති කරන්න බැහැ කියලා කවුරු වුණත් කමක් නැහැ ඒකට ඉඩක් නැහැ නමුත් රාජ්‍ය ප්‍රචණ්ඩත්වයත් ඇති කරලා මානව හිමිකම් යට කරන්නත් බැහැ ඉතින් මේ වෙනස අපි තේරුම් ගත යුතුයි ආණ්ඩුවක් කරනකොට මේ වෙනස අපි තේරුම් ගත යුතුයි එතකොට මම ඒ කතාවට යන්නේ නැහැ නමුත් මං හිතන්නේ රජයට ලොකු වගකීමක් තියෙනවා මානව හිමිකම් ආරක්ෂා කරන්න අද එතුමගේ කතාවේ අපි කතා කළේ හුඟක්ම අරගලය ගැන එතකොට අරගලේ දහ දෙනෙක් හිටියා නම් නම දෙනෙක් සාමකාමීව අරගලය කළේ විරෝධතාවය පෙන්වේ මමත් එතන ගිය පුද්ගලයෙක් මටත් පහර දුන්න නමුත් මම ඒක කියන්නේ හේතුව ඇවිල්ලා අපි අර සුළු කොටස නීතිය කවුරු හරි කඩ කළොත් අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම ක්‍රියා කරන්න ඕනේ නමුත් ඒ සුළු කොටස මුල් කරගෙන සාමකාමීව අරගලය කරන අය විරෝධය පාන අය ප්‍රජාතන්ත්‍රවාදය වෙනුවෙන් හිටගන්න අය වා අපි ආරක්ෂා කළ යුතුයි කියලා මම මේ අවස්ථාවේ සඳහන් කරන්නට ඕනේ today we were talking about the defense ministry and also we are talking about technology and i want to speak about uh, speak about the issues on technology now the use of information communications technology is very important because right it's also a, a really a huge export income for this country the industry estimates that the information technology industry brings in about 1.7 billion dollars in 2021 brought 1.7 billion dollars in 2021 the central bank estimate is of course lower it's like 1.1 billion and uh, other government estimates are there at 1.4 but it's a big one because if you look at it like that at the moment it's only second to the garments industry the potential is much higher they say that maybe by 2024 it can be 3 billion dollars the potential is very very high so therefore uh, we we have to encourage this industry as an export the one of the things that i have uh, uh, said that the government should be discerning about is it has put taxes up to 30% but i think you should discriminate particularly where it concerns exports and particularly particularly information communications exports i think you should be discriminating there because we should be encouraging it whether it's software whether it's it services offshore businesses coming into sri lanka this should be encouraged because this is potentially much larger than the garments industry and the industries that we are looking at today it's much much larger the potential is so great and therefore Uh, the government should look at it the government's role in it is very critical and very important uh, i see that uh, if we, if, we, if we look at uh, it it was uh, in the speech of the president right just the other day in the budget speech he said something about his dissatisfaction with government institutions actually promoting this now i'm sure there can be dissatisfactions and he he said something to the effect that he might appoint a committee to go into it so this this president when he was prime minister did the same thing and that was 20 years ago he had a minister milinda morogoda and he appointed a committee i was then the head of a bank the chief executive officer i was made chairman of the committee and the committee met and we came up with a program called east sri lanka and with that program with that program right we created the information communications technology agency so we are glad that that agency is there if you look at recently the qr code based full pass solution was created by the information technology agency icta and of course implemented in partnership with two private companies over 6.2 million citizens are now using this this boarded system then if we look at it in terms of right ict literacy the that program in uh, the, the preliminary work started in 2002 in 
right? ICT literacy went from 7% by 2013 to 35 percent. And more recently, we know that it has gone even higher. The ICT literacy rates have gone higher. Then if you look at the technology startup ecosystem, right, it has also grown tremendously, right, from 32 million to more than 228 million. And thousands and thousands of jobs have been actually created. I remember when we were doing this at the beginning, and we created the East Sri Lanka system, we created ICTA, we had the HSBC center, call center, I remember serving at that time on the BOI board as well as the head of the bank, right? And WNS and others were also brought into the country. So tremendous potential, right? Right at the, right at the beginning. I remember uh, uh, discussing uh, and, and trying to get Microsoft to come to Sri Lanka, managed to get them to open an office in Sri Lanka, arranged a handshake between Microsoft right, and uh, Bill Gates and Rani Vikramasinghe, the then Prime Minister, when he had gone to the United States and he was with President Bush, it's then that the government changed by a decision of President Chandrika Kumar Nutunga. And the whole intention of that was to get Microsoft to actually put in a factory in this country at that time, because we want to change, right, the destiny, the economic destiny of this country. Then ICTA has also been involved in Government Information Center, 1919, lots of people know that. Presently, more than 150,000 calls come per month into, in, in, into that center. And we also know that uh, ICTA has worked on basically the two single and Tamil languages, the standardization, right, interoperable standardization of Sinhalese and Tamil, which are very critical and which are very important. It also has an e-revenue license system. More than 63 lakhs of people are on the licensing system. You go online, you license, and, and the revenue that is coming in at the moment is 11.4 billion. Also, on the side of the law, right, we have had the Data Protection Act, we have had the Computer Crimes Act, we have had the Electronic Transactions Act. In terms of law, we are basically benchmarking ourselves into the international standards. That, was, that is what has actually happened in this period. We have also entered the Budapest Cybercrime Convention, first among the Asian countries, and the UN Electronic Communications Convention. So strides have been made. Deployed the first digital signature-based authentication system, Lanka Sign. Right? And then, if you want to get a birth certificate, death certificate, marriage certificate, today from 10, 20, 30 minutes, you can actually get it. And that, that's how far it has advanced. And in with working with the Ministry of Health, Hospital Information Management System, right? And uh, for this system, national hospitals, provincial hospitals, teaching hospitals, district hospitals, all of this has been included, and over 7 million registrations. Now, in Sri Lanka, when it comes to medical health, we normally talk in the family, somebody is ill, we say who is the specialist, and we send them there. There's really no family medicine system in this country, like in very advanced economies. We need to get that. And technology becomes an important part of it. Here the foundation has been laid for that as well. Over 25,000 government servants have been trained, 650 CIOs and leaders Leaders have been trained in this. Honourable Member, you have two minutes more. Uh, 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 and then we see, basically, they started business incubators have been started, right? There are many, many achievements. International awards have been won. But I would like to quickly say this. this all of this has a digital infrastructure for government, right? And that is currently established by ICTA and operated under ICTA, this digital infrastructure. The Lanka Gateway middleware infrastructure, Right? The whole idea of having one government, you know, operation. Lanka government cloud, right? 200 software solutions. Uh, there are no 100 government institutions uh, basically hosted in it. The Lanka government network is there, right? And government SMS, La Lanka government's uh, payment services are all in that. So the architecture is becoming, the architecture is very important. I would like to say this. They have, when ICTA was created, the problem in information technology is very difficult to get the best people to come in a typical government service because the market rates are much higher to attract the best people. And therefore, a unique 
a unique model was created. And this was under the direction of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe at that time and Minister Milinda Morogoda, that we all got together, private sector and the government, and we actually came up with this. But today there are challenges. I'm not saying that that must be a perfect organization because it was politicized, you know, as it proceeded. And therefore, the critical people need to be retained. Now, what I would like to say in closing is this, that we need to be extremely careful, right, that we have an institution in government which, which facilitates and mediates on behalf of government. It takes care of the core digital infrastructure and also the concept of the whole government and one Honorable government member, your concept. Time, sir. I'm going to conclude. So the ICT industry, education, government entities, international, everybody needs to get together. Industrializing digital and digitalized industries in close collaboration, innovation, and creating the ecosystem. So my, my, my uh, message is this, that if we think that we can just dispense with what we have, it's unlike 20 years ago, because the whole government depends on it, and that can create chaos it can create. And therefore, I would say that this institution, if it has to be reformed, it has to be reformed, or it has to be re replaced with a similar institution. And in the process, it needs to be careful that no government infrastructure is destroyed and, and the government infrastructure is kept in place, because otherwise, even the exports in the country will be affected, apart from the services provided to citizens. Thank you very much Thank for the you, time Thank you, Honorable Member. Ilangata Garu, SP Disanayaka Mantri